Welcome back to another Marvel Spider-Man 2 video. And this one today, guys, we finally got it. We got all that brand new information, all that new gameplay. Basically, every tidbit that we got was so exciting. And I genuinely think that this is probably the last little piece of information we're going to get for the game until it releases. Maybe a launch trailer or something like this. But today is the biggest news shot that we've gotten throughout the whole game's life cycle. Now, before we get into it, if you could subscribe, you guys have been killing it, and I, I really do love the support. I'm gonna be trying to pump out as much videos before the game comes out next month, so go ahead and subscribe to stay up to date with everything to do with Marvel Spider-Man 2. Let's go ahead and talk about the first thing that I think is very important, and it's the fact that they actually played, the people that went to the event, they played a six month build. This was from six months ago. The game is a lot more polished now, which is surprising to even think about because what we saw was just absolutely phenomenal. I mean, first off, the performance modes, there's 30 FPS, the 40 FPS, and then of course the 60 FPS, and all of them have ray tracing, even the 30 FPS. I know that they didn't have that in the last games, but man, that is freaking incredible. I absolutely love the fact that you can go throughout any FPS that you want and really nail down how you want the game to kind of look for you. Of course, the movement's gonna be faster because of the SSD of the PS5, and just overall transitions like we saw that freaking, oh my god, the fast travel that we saw, dude, freaking immaculate. Like, just being able to point on anywhere in the map, click on it, and travel there is just so perfect. And it's all thanks to the SSD of the PS5. And I love the fact that you could literally just go ahead and, and traversal wherever you want. Um, there's a lot of things, of course, like hair physics and stuff like that, like Mary Jane having her hair down. That's apparently never really been done a lot in, in video games, having characters have their hair down because that's the flow and whatnot. So the PS5's hardware is just immaculate. It's definitely a lot better than what we got from previous games and from what, of course, we've been seeing from Miles Morales on the PS5 and, of course, the remaster as well. It's a step higher, and it's just perfect for this game. It's, it's so much bigger. Another thing we got to talk about is, of course, the combat. The freaking symbiote surge where it has the rage mode, oh my god, oh my goodness, bro, the suit changes, and he almost looks like he's slowly turning into Venom when he turns into a rage mode. What if there's a moment where you push that rage mode, and it makes you become Venom? Ah, I'm just saying, the rage mode is an incredible feature, and I think that Overall, the quick fire gadgets that we got and the quick fire abilities are really going to make the game so much smoother. I haven't been able to play it because they didn't invite me. They invited somebody that has 8,000 subscribers and 2,000 followers on Twitter, and he somehow got to play the game before me, but it's okay. We're, what we're talking about here is, of course, what they played. <laughs> and, um, you know, the, the combat just looks like it flows so much better than how it did in the previous games. And all of the, the moves, the sound effects, it sounds more impactful. It sounds like they're really trying to make the symbiote feel like you're really hurting guys. And even the takedowns are just something that looks straight out of a goddamn Mortal Kombat game. I love everything that they're doing right now. Even the boss battles too. The boss battles have freaking health bars. Dude, they didn't have that in the last game. They tried to go for a more cinematic, you know, you just keep fighting until you get to the cutscene. But this is actually very interesting. It's almost like, you know, Sekiro or not, you know, not Sekiro, but any basic, you know, uh, fight or uh, video game that has boss battles that give you a health bar. So that's very nice. Lizard running around fighting Lizard, that looks like it's going to be so much fun. And the overall feel of the bosses now are going to be 10 times better because of that, that type of health bar. You know, just seeing uh, your opponent start, start to dwindle down and then maybe they start doing things to you and there are moves for the bosses that allow them to counter your moves as well so you have to look out for the parries the heavy parries there's so many things that go into the boss battles and combat now it's definitely a step higher than what we got before and i'm very happy about what they improved and how they improved it and i just cannot wait to actually be able to get my hands on that in general imagine fighting <laughs> imagine it I'm dead serious. He has his health bar up. You get to like switch as Peter and Miles is slowly beating him up. And then he has another health bar and just does more and more shit. Like, bro, this game is going to feel and be so epic just because of that little change there. And I, I can't wait to see the bosses. I know it's going to be perfect. Um, another thing is that the web wings are also triangle. So it's a new little system. It's easier. I thought it was going to be a little bit more complicated. I don't know why. But I think the web wings, the uh, overall slingshot... That's perfect. And even the fact that you go faster as well. You know, a lot of people are complaining about the, the running on the ground. And I'm okay with them not doing that if they add more things. And here's another thing. I'll get into this in a different video. I'm going to make a whole video about it. But you can't have them running on the ground 
when there's cars and people on the ground. Like, for Web of Shadows, dude, I've been playing this game for the last few days, so unless you play this game, please don't talk to me. The streets are fucking ten times bigger than Marvel Spider-Man 2, and there's nobody and no cars and no people in the road. You get to run around because it's empty. You can't do that for this game because there's fucking cars everywhere. So we got to get that notion out of our head. We got to accept what we're getting and kind of negate what we are just so logically asking for. That just isn't possible. You know, it just isn't possible to do. Um, fall damage is a feature, which, oh my God, that is perfect. I didn't think it was necessary. That's, you know, I, I think that having him just flap on the ground is cool. But now actually being able to like fall and make a mistake and actually hurt yourself, I love it. I think that's a really good feature. I'm definitely gonna have it on. You could toggle it on and off if you wanted to, but for like chases and whatnot, if you're doing tricks and you fuck up and you're, and you're really not paying attention, fall damage is really gonna be immersive. And I really like that they're doing that in this game. It's such a, a cherry on top of the web swinging and just overall the uh, features that we have in this game. There's more environmental damage too, which I think they're taking from Web of Shadows. When you look at Web of Shadows, you get to destroy storefronts and and destroy signs and whatnot. And when you're web swinging, you literally destroy light posts when you're hitting them. And you also, uh, when you're doing combat and stuff like that, uh, what they said is that the environments get more damaged. And I think that that's a really smart idea because it just, of course, is more immersive. And I think that they should have done a little bit more of that in the first game. Uh, I guess the first game kind of allow you to burst out windows, but that's only if they were actually, of course, you know, like <laughs> enemies inside the building. But I think that if you're the symbiote Peter and you just start bursting out windows for no reason, it'll be funny as shit. We have 200 suit variants. I think this is where we kind of confirm. But the 200 suit variants is really cool. The fact that we have different colors and different type of schemes that make it look like completely different suits, I love it. I really can't. I'm going to make a whole video talking about all the suits, I promise. Uh, Peter has tricks. And apparently, Evan Falarka, you freaking monster, he said that you could have a trick with Peter where you're falling and doing a Rubik's Cube and you complete the Rubik's Cube while you're doing it. Like, oh my god. They really revamped everything about Peter, and as soon as they saw people crying about the animations, they're like, okay, here you go. And now they're giving us everything with Peter. It's it's perfect. They probably gave us all their assets, every deleted file that they had from the first game in this game. They're like, oh, fuck it, here you go. And they're, they're probably gonna give us every single animation for the Peter tricks, the Miles tricks. Uh, Miles apparently still has the same tricks, but that's okay. I, I think that that's fine. You know, he doesn't really need more tricks right now uh, there's not a lot that you could really do maybe if you just revamp them and change them a little bit but i don't i'm not gonna go, i'm not gonna complain too much i love miles and tricks in the first game anyway so that's not too much of a turn off for me uh you could use symbiote abilities for any suit and that's very interesting the fact that you can actually just go ahead and use like the rainy suit and use the symbiote abilities or go ahead and use like the the 299 suit and use the symbiote like that's really awesome and i think that that's a nice way to kind of immerse yourself in the game too because if you still have the symbiote while you're playing throughout the story right you have to use a symbiote every once in a while and then at the end of the game you don't you're not gonna have those abilities so you still use the suits normally i get where they're coming from and i think that overall they're really doing a really good job of giving us everything we really need for this game and it, it's it's perfect um, a few other things that they have too is that apparently there's a Spider-Verse side quest. And a lot of people might get mad about that. I, I'm i on the fence. They might be setting up something in the future, maybe even DLC, maybe even a third game, or maybe even a second Miles Morales game where he does his own thing in the Spider-Verse for just one game. That'd be kind of cool, right? A 10 hour Spider-Verse experience. They could really throw out a lot of things there. So I think that that might be setting up something in the future. And they kind of already confirmed it's a Spider-Verse thing. Like they're talking about you know, villains from this Spider-Man universe, and it's like, it's so weird. The way they're wording things, it really is leading me to believe that that multiverse thing might be a bit of a big thing in the next game. So we have to wait and see. And that's, I mean, pretty much it. There's the small things that we talked about yesterday with, of course, Miles being able to jump in, or Peter being able to jump in during combat, and, of course, uh, the web wings and how that works. The, I've already showed off this fast travel earlier. You know, all the things that we basically talked about here is just massive. I'm sure I missed a few things here and there, but for the most part, those are the big things, the big gists that really are important that you need to know about this game. And I personally think that this is winding up to be one of the best superhero games of all time. Um, these guys got to play three hours of this game. You know what I mean? So they, they got really, really lucky 
and it's it's really incredible that Insomniac gave people the opportunity. I kind of wish they did demos still, because like in Arkham City, they give us like an 11 minute demo in the first like, of course, uh, part of the game, and he gives plays Batman running around for a little bit, and it, there's not like major spoilers or anything like that, but you know, they can do the same thing here, where they give us a little part of the game, you get to like fight Lizard a little bit. I mean, we've already seen most of Lizard's boss battles, I don't know why they can't just give us a demo like that. I think that would be cool to really give to the public, like, maybe a week before the game comes out and get people hyped. But, um, overall, I think that, you know, it's really awesome that we're getting this information, we're getting this footage, and they're really marketing this game heavily now in the last month. And I can't wait to see what else they have in store for us before the game comes out. But overall, I'm excited for the game in general. I, I will be okay if they don't give us a single damn thing until the game's released, because I want this to be a surprise. All the story stuff, everything about the combat and stuff, I kind of want more of this to be a surprise. So we'll see what happens. Don't forget to say in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Peace out.